we want to look at the study of relationships. That's very important because in most decision making, in business, in research, in any, any field, relationships are very important. And quantitatively, there's a way that you can study those relationships. The most common form is correlations. And if you push it further, you can look at regressions. Quantitatively, you want to be able to study relationships. And some of the tools available are correlations. So if you, if you advance it, a lot of relationship studies are based on the idea of correlation. But relationships to study in quantitative way are mainly in three forms, or relationships reveal themselves in three forms, through the form, the magnitude or the size, and the direction. So for the form is whether the relationship is linear or nonlinear. And by linear, I mean it's a straight line. And nonlinear, it is not a straight line. The relationship cannot be described by a straight line. So it can be in any, any form. Okay, so for, for linear, we can describe the relationship in a straight line if you have, say, x, uh, y, yeah. Or it can be of any direction. So that's a straight line. For nonlinear, it's going to be in that any form of a curve or this or that, any form of relationship that is not described by a straight line will be nonlinear. And the magnitude is how strong the relationship is. Is the relationship weak, moderate, the arbitrary numbers that are assigned to what level of magnitude constitutes weak, moderate, or small. But they will fall within a range of the correlation to and Y or any stay within uh, so it's actually negative here first, then positive. Within positive and negative one, which includes zero. So as you, you, you go to the extremes of these numbers, you, you are increasing the strength of the relationship or the magnitude. At the exact extremes, you can have a perfect relationship. So with the then the, dire, the direction is whether the relationship is positive or negative. And we also refer to that as inverse or direct. And this, this happens in a lot of fields where relationships are in the same direction or in opposite direction. So when you have a correlation value, it can tell you about both the magnitude and the direction. The form will not be clear to you, but if you assume a method of calculation that was based on the linear relationship or nonlinear relationship, then you can tell if the relationship is linear or not. Or you can plot the relationship and see whether it's a linear one or a nonlinear one. In this, the correlation that we are looking here are mainly bivariate. So you see here I've written X and Y. So relation to, between two variables at a time. So you can have a lot of variables together, but you look at them in pairs. Now to visualize relationships quantitatively, you can do what you call the scatter plot. So you have the data for X and Y, you plot them accordingly, you get the, what you call your scatter plot. The scatter plot is also able to tell you of the magnitude as well as the direction. So there can be a pattern, there can be a pattern that will emerge from the plot you make. So a pattern will emerge from the plot that you make. So if I make this, this scatter plot and I make that scatter plot and I make say another one here. Yeah. 
So we see that there's a pattern that has emerged. There's another pattern that has emerged, and there's another one. So this this can tell us of the direction. This is also of the direction and the closeness of the points can also give us an indication of the magnitude. If for some reason we are able to, to have a straight line through the points, that can be now referred to as a linear relationship. Now, what we have to understand is that when we talk about relationships in quantitative terms, all we know is that they are related. We, we are not interested in which variable may be depending on the other, which variable changes before the other changes. All we know is that they are related. But if they are related, there's a way that you can go further to describe the exact evolution of the relationship. So if they are moving in the same direction or the opposite, to what degree does the change in one correspond with change in another variable? So that if we're able to establish some relationship, we can go on and consider the evolution of the relationship through the regression analysis, which means re correlation is a precursor to regression. If there's no correlation, you cannot go further to study regression because they are both studying relationships in a if you like a stepwise approach. Now, at this point, I think I want to state something that we may have, we should have stated earlier. So we are looking at um, quantitative relationships. So we need to make, a, we are making a statistical test. And a statistical test will usually be based on the hypothesis, which we'll call H0. The alternative will be HA or H1, depending on how you prefer it. So in this case, we are looking at relations between variables. So we can look at the correlation between X and Y to be non-existent. And the alternative will be that X and Y will be some value that is not equal to zero, which means the relation, there's a relationship which is either positive or negative, strong, weak, of any form or direction. So it means that when you go to regression, we also be testing the same hypothesis. And for hypothesis, there should be some rule of thumb to decide on the hypothesis. A number of things are used. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to be very brief so that we don't go too much into statistics. Here, we'll, the output will we'll restrict ourselves to the p-value, which is basically probability value. And the probability value is your support for your null hypothesis. In this case, the fact that there's no relation between x and y or any two variables. And at the 95% confidence level, we expect that we have at least 5% probability value to confirm our null hypothesis. Anything less than that, we are not able to confirm our null hypothesis. So when we start to get our outputs, that's how we decide if the relationship is existent. And if it is existent, is it statistically significant or not? So let's bear that in mind. We use it a lot in this, in this session and going forward, actually. So there are types of correlations that are common. We have the Pearson's product moment correlation. The Pearson's product moment correlation. The name is important because it describes what a product moment is. If in yesterday's class we looked at some movements, we look at mean, mode, standard deviation, variance, all of that. If you look at them, they are basically arithmetic computations, which means arithmetic computations are useful or applicable only in quantitative or numeric numbers, specifically continuous. 
So if you look at the product moment correlation, Pearson's product moment correlation is typically applied to numeric values and when the data is continuous because it's a uh, because of the name product moment and it's based on the arithmetic notation. There's an assumption to that, which is also that it's a, it's a linear relationship and it follows the normal distribution. That means that it is parametric. Then there's another nonlinear relation uh, correlation, which is the Spearman's rank row, which means that has to do with uh, ordinary data, where you have to rank before you you make the relationship. That is also, but that is parametric because it's based. It's also based on the normal distribution when it's nonlinear. However, there's a third one which is not commonly used, but it's a very powerful one. It's called the Kendall's tau correlation, which is both nonlinear and non-parametric. So it is free from any distribution. So you realize that as we go along, if we, we transform the data into any form, the correlation of the tau remains because the transformation of the data changes the distribution of the data. And because it's non-parametric, it doesn't change. So that's something that is important to look at. In all of these, we can get them to be for two variables that is influenced by a third variable. So the correlations that you see here, the PMN, PS, and candle, they are actually total correlations. They are total correlations, total. But then, so total means that there's a contemporaneous variable that is impacting on the relationship between the two variables. And for most of the time, that, that stress the relationship that you want to look at. So you may want to remove or suppress the impact of that third variable, and that will move you to what you call partial correlation, partial Correlation. So you realize that there's correlation in this sense is basically between two variables, but there can be a third variable that we are trying to limit the impact of that changes is to partial correlation. So all of these types of correlations can be looked at in terms of a third variable that we suppress to get the true relationship between the two variables. A typical example is you look at the the economic situation since COVID, for example, between higher prices, between inflation, GDP groups, all those ones have been impacted because of the pandemic and the global economy is still trying to recover. So it will be a good idea that if you want to know, say, the relationship between GDP growth and maybe population, you need, may need to account for the possible influence of the COVID-19 pandemic. You can look at the, the infection rate or the, the fatality rates, and that can tell you of the, the actual relationship between population. And so briefly, we want to look at some of the, the formula that it's used. So as I mentioned earlier, I realized from the partial correlation, there's additions and subtractions and multiplications because this is a typical arithmetic operation between X and Y. Okay. But with the Spearman, because it's, a, it's an ordinary data, there should be some form of ranking, which is actually, if you take the D squared, it means they're going to rank X, they are going to rank Y, and you take the difference for the two, and that will be your D squared. So there's a ranking in there, and, and a hint of why this is not linear is the square. We know that for all linear relationships, the powers or the exponents are just one. If it differs from one kind, positive or negative, then the relationship is not linear. For the candles, now, there's also a rank because 
it assumes um, an ordinary relationship. So we have the P, which is the number of pairs that are moving in the same direction. So if we, they are going up, both of them are going up. If they are going down, both of them are going down. But if they are moving in the opposite direction, we call them the discordant pairs. And you may have some pairs that are also tying. So that is how that one works. But the partial has to be mentioned earlier. I realized there's a third variable, Z. And we can understand that by looking at two, what we call linear combinations. So you have three variables. So you are going to form, say, three, two linear combinations of the variables. So that means you can have x, which is a function of y and z. And you can have y, which is a function of x and z. And you can even have a third one, you can have z, which is a function of x and y. And that's what happens most of the time. You have multiple variables that you want to look at a relationship across. You look at the linear combination of each of the variables across the other variables. So each of these ones, even though we are yet to get into regression, each of these ones will yield an equation which has a residual. And those residuals are the ones that are represented as the E's in this equation. So you realize that we have the relation between x and y. That will be the, the original relation we want to look at. And we take the linear combination between x and z, as well as linear combination between y and z. If we, you, we do them, we are able to suppress the relationship between uh, the effect of z on the two variables. So that's how the partial correlation works. Now, if you're able to, if our now hypothesis for this is not accepted or fail to accept, fail to accept the now hypothesis between of the correlation between X and Y, then we can go on to look at the evolution of the relation between X and Y. So that is one alternative hypothesis x. Sorry, so this is equal to zero. If this one is accepted, then we can go on to look at regression.